In the year 2000, Singapore decided to build a biomedical science initiative as a new sector of the economy in Singapore. Towards the end, they had a group visit from England, US and elsewhere, led by Lord Oxburgh. And Lord Oxburgh's report suggested that Singapore should consider building a graduate medical school. President Tony Tan, who at that time was the Deputy Prime Minister, along with the President of NUS and Minister Ng Eng Hin, visited Duke. And during that visit, they formed a relationship which suggested that Duke could be the ideal partner for Singapore. And it led in 2005 to an agreement between Duke and the government of Singapore to create the new medical school. So the agreement started with a number of key individuals at Duke. Ralph Snyderman was at that time the Chancellor for Health Affairs, along with Dr. Tabor, Dr. Edward Holmes, and these individuals played a role in beginning to create the vision for what has become Duke in US. At the time of the agreement, Dr. Victor Zhao was the Chancellor of Duke, and Dr. Sandy Williams was a dean at Duke. And the two of them turned the agreement into reality when Sandy Williams agreed to simultaneously become the founding dean for Duke in US. He recruited Patrick Casey. Patrick Casey came over from Duke and he started the early building of the school. We recruited Giselia GM to come in as the vice dean for administration and it slowly started to put the infrastructure together. The first major recruit was Dr. Kame. After he came over to Duke in US, created a team that took the Duke curriculum from Durham, North Carolina, worked with individuals in Singapore, and reconstructed how to deliver the curriculum using a novel approach, which has now become well-known around the world, called Team Lead. I have two key individuals that I should always mention, Sandy Cook and Frank Stammer. They worked with Dr. Kame in making the education curriculum and team lead a reality. So Duke NUS, when it was created, had seven stakeholders. Each of the stakeholders had a representative on the board of Duke NUS, and the board was chaired by Mr. Tony Chu. A lot of credit goes to Mr. Tony Chu, who helped us navigate through very difficult times and very difficult situations in our early years. So when I first came to join Duke NUS, one of the first people that I met was Professor Ivy Hung. And any of you who know her, know her that she's very convincing. And she convinced me that Duke NUS would succeed. And that's one of the reasons why I and many others came over to Duke NUS to create this, to become what it is today. Prof. Tan Sakyat was a group CEO of SingHealth. Prof. Su Kichi was the head of the National Cancer Center, where the cheerleaders, the major advocates for the early creation of Duke and US, and who also brought all the numerous clinicians and faculty from SingHealth to join us in moving this adventure along. A number of ministers also helped us in our early part of our journey. And I just want to mention a few. Minister Tharman Shanmugaratnam was the Minister of Education and he played a key role in helping us build the framework for the education approach in Singapore. Minister Kobun Wan was the Minister of Health and he was also very instrumental in helping us work out how to deliver the education in the healthcare system. Minister Tio Chi Hen also was very critical in helping us build up the school in the early years. Minister Vivian Balakrishnan was an ophthalmologist, helped us navigate some of the critical issues that surrounds medical education and its implementation in Singapore. The two universities were very key in making this a reality because we actually had to give a degree from both universities. President Richard Broadhead and Michael Merson, who was the Vice Chancellor for Duke and US, helped create an atmosphere where the two universities could collaborate and help each other out in making Duke and US a success. Professor Tan Chochuan helped us deal with a number of the issues that 
happen when you move a U.S. education into essentially a British system of education in Singapore. He helped come up with novel ways to tackle those issues and overcome many of the difficulties and obstacles that were there in the early stages of the building of the school. After he stepped down from our board, Professor Tan Eng Chai became the provost of NUS and he has also ably helped us continue to navigate and deal with many of the issues that will occur and continue to occur during the development of the school. Our other partner in Singapore is ASTA, Mr. Philip Yeo and Dr. Baeswan Jin were very helpful in building the research infrastructure for Duke in US. And after they stepped down, Mr. Lin Chuan Po continued to help us build Duke in US. Many of the permanent secretaries who helped us include Ms. Tan Chingi, Ms. Yong Yingyi. Besides the education program, we also had to build a research program. Dr. Casey, working with the Government of Singapore, decided to focus on a few research areas to build our strengths around. We managed to recruit really outstanding people from around the globe to head these programs, and they in turn recruited terrific faculty to help make Duke in US what it is. Our people is the essence and the foundation of Duke in US. Without them, we would not be where we are. And why are we here? We're here to recruit and train the best students to become clinician scientists. And when we were still a pipe dream, we recruited a group of pioneering students who took a chance, joined us, and really helped us shape the early foundation of the school. And I want to especially thank this pioneering group of students so besides the people that we recruited, we obviously needed a place for the people to work in. And I have to mention Mr. Philip Ung and Mr. Philip Eng, who helped us build this wonderful building. The building is the signature symbol of the school. In phase one, which lasted from 2005 to 2012, we accomplished our initial aims of starting a medical school and graduating our first couple of batches of medical students. In phase two, we focused on increasing our engagement with Singh Health and to create academic medicine on the Uttaram campus and with KK Hospital. We currently have over 900 faculty who participate in the development of academic medicine, the creation of academic clinical programs, and an institute for education and an institute for research our vice deans that have come on board, Dr. John Rush, who came from UT Southwestern and who created the early phase of the research enterprise, and Professor Wang Tian Yin have taken this to the next level. After Mr. Tony Chu stepped down, Mr. Kai Nargolwala became the chairman of Duke NUS Governing Board, and he has really helped us move to the next phase of our growth. I also need to mention the many donors who have helped fund the school and help us become where we are. In particular, I want to thank the estate of Mr. Kutek Kwat for supporting the development of medical researchers and physician scientists in Singapore. Last couple of years, we are entering the next phase in our journey with the creation of centers. These centers bring in a wealth of expertise and knowledge beyond medicine and build new areas of strength for Singapore. One unique center that we are particularly proud of having been part of is the Lian Center for Palliative Care. This center focuses on end of life issues. It's one of the first that in Asia and it's one that has played a role in the development of end of life policies for Singapore and elsewhere. In a very short span of time, Duke NUS has become part of the landscape of Singapore's healthcare enterprise. It has also become part of the landscape of Singapore's educational system, as many of the educational approaches that we have pioneered are beginning to be used at schools and elsewhere in Singapore. We have a number of joint collaborations 
with many partners inside Singapore and outside Singapore. And these partnerships have also led to the creation of new enterprises, new intellectual property, in many cases with many of these partners. One of the ways in which we hope to facilitate this is the creation of a new center, the Center for Technology and Development. This center will play a key role in enhancing the ability to translate research into practical applications to improve the lives of patients and to play a role in the economic growth of Singapore. Our school and our students and our faculty are already having a significant impact on the healthcare landscape in Singapore. Our students are beginning to produce discoveries and they're even in the process of creating enterprises that could shape the development of new treatments for patients in Singapore. Going forward, I think Duke NUS will continue to play a major role in developing new treatments, new medicines, and transforming the delivery of healthcare in Singapore and helping play a role in the economic growth of the biomedical sector. I look forward for the continued involvement and growth of Duke in US in the next 10 years. 2015 is a year of transition for me. I complete my term as uh, Dean of Duke in US. It has indeed been a privilege and an honor to be here for this exciting venture. In particular, I wish to thank all the people who have played a role in building Duke in US and helping me and helping the school move forward and grow in this very short period of time. I look forward to welcoming my successor, Dr. Tom Kaufman, who will do an excellent job in moving the school along in the next phase of its growth. I will miss everyone. Thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. And I wish the school and everyone the best of success going forward.